to be able to have all of you here tonight. Uh, it is a special night for us, and, uh, and so we want to just uh, welcome those that are not usually here with us, you know, men like Pastor John Schwab and those that just come on special occasions, you know. What a blessing it is to be able to have you all here and uh, Great time to be able to encourage one another and just to be able to have that fellowship, sweet fellowship. I want to thank all of you that came out to the pig roast this year. What a blessing that was. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Great time with some sweet teaching and worship that was going on all day there. And then we had a sweet time down in Mexico with the leadership of the ministry of U-Turn for Christ from around uh, the country and some of them outside of the country that made it, and uh, so uh, a sweet time of training and and being able to uh, dive into a book that John Maxwell wrote uh, and challenged us to be able to grow in our love and our relationship with the Lord and especially in leadership. Uh, this evening we have the blessing of being able to recognize a lady who has been such a blessing to us here uh, in the ministry, uh, to all of us here in the ministry, but none more than to Peggy in helping uh, as she has in overseeing the woman's ranch in such a special way for the last five years. And so Cindy has been uh, just a godsend to us, and uh, she, <laughs> amen. You ever notice that the ladies are much louder about <laughs> celebrating? <laughs> uh, what a blessing it is to, to be able to have them uh, recognizing and acknowledging all that Cindy really has done over those last five years and, and the plenty of lives that she's been able to touch and minister to and really disciple in the Lord has been such a blessing uh, to be able to see. And so we want to thank her in a special way and pray for her uh, this evening. Uh, we'll have uh, some cake and refreshments afterwards in the fellowship hall uh, for those that are able to stay and be able to uh, fellowship with us there. Proverbs 27, turn there for a moment, would you please? Chapter 27 in the book of Proverbs. We go through the book of Proverbs every morning as a ministry uh, prayer, praying that uh, men and women would just uh, learn, if they would, to be able to get into the Word every morning early and then to, to be able to meditate on it as the Word in Psalms tells us day and night. And Psalms 27 and verse 2 says this. Proverbs 27 and verse 2 says this. It says, Let another man praise you, and not your own mouth, a stranger, and not your own lips. Well, I'm blessed that I'm not a stranger to Cindy and that I can speak on her behalf as her pastor for the last five years and blessed to be able to just uh, speak about uh, the way in which she's carried herself, the way in which she's humbled herself, the way that she's come alongside submitted herself, the way that she's been serious about studying the Word uh, in, in the service, just no distractions. I'm paying attention to the message. I know God wants to speak to me. Uh, attitude that has been a, an example uh, for the ladies that have come through the ministry over the last five years to be able to see and then to follow. And so the Bible tells us, let not our own lips, but another. And so Peggy is going to come and going to be able to share with us a little bit uh, her thoughts about Cindy. And then we'll uh, have a time again, like I say, after service uh, for us to celebrate with her. Go ahead, babe. You can bring that mic up and I'll turn it on for you. And then you'll be able to, to share a few thoughts. You want to sit here? Is that on? It's on. Speak. Hello. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't sound like it was on. 
You can sit next to me. Right. It's okay. <laughs> or can I sit next to you? Um, gosh, this is just such a hard moment for me and for really for Pastor Jerry and I both. Um, not just for Cindy, but those that have come to serve and, and <coughs> when God calls them to a new work. It's hard for us. You know, my older brother, I was sharing with him this week, and he said, you know, you turn is catch and release. You know that, right? And I said, yes, but I don't like to let my fish go. <laughs> Not that she's a fish, but, but I didn't mean it like that, Cindy. But um, I just want to just tell Cindy and just tell all of you what a blessing it was when God brought Cindy through the doors of U-Turn for Christ. And um, I had been praying for um, an overseer that would love these women and love them enough to correct them, but love them unconditionally and, and do the job that it's hard at the Women's Ranch because we do have to correct, and it's not fun, and people don't like to be corrected. But So there's a balance of loving and there's a balance of correcting. And when Cindy became the overseer, um, I began to watch her and the love that she had for these women and really the women at church. And her heart just began to just be flayed open for the Lord Jesus Christ. And she's going to come and share her testimony, so I'm not going to share any of that. But Cindy, I just want to tell you that we love you. We are so proud of you. Amen. We know that God's got even greater things, um, greater things for you that you've that you've already done here. That God's going to use you. He's got a great calling on your life, mm -hmm. and the ability that you have to pour into women to make a difference in their life has just been phenomenal. And this room is full because there's many, many. All of us in this room know and have watched you pour out your heart to many, many men and women in this room, mostly women, but um, <laughs> but there's times, too, because she's led the church crew here to clean the church, and she's a shaker and a mover. I always tell her, you are a shaker and a mover, girl, and I love shaker and movers because we can get a lot done for Jesus when we're shaker and movers, but I wanted to just share a couple of verses with you. Uh, Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, it says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that, that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by, Jesus, by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. God's done a great thing exceedingly and abundantly above all you could think or ask while you've been here, and he's going to continue to do that Amen. wherever he takes you. And so the other verse I want to share with you is Isaiah 41.10. It says, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will <coughs> uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. I'll never forget when Pastor, and J Pastor Jerry and I were called from Hemet to a new work out here. And it was fearful. It was scary. But I want to just remind you that the Lord is with you, and we're all with you. Mm -hmm. We're all, we're not going anywhere. We know you're not going anywhere. I mean, hopefully not too far, but, <laughs> but we're all with you. So we love you, and we thank you for your heart to, to minister to these women, hundreds of women that have come through in the last five years that you've impacted for the kingdom of heaven. And God sees that, and your reward is from him. Amen? Amen. God bless you, sweetie. Amen. Great, babe. Yeah, what a blessing it is to be able to have Cindy come up and to be able to share with us. There's a little video uh, that she wants to be able to share and to be able to give a little testimony uh, this evening before we dive into the Lord's word. So here's... Cindy, huh? Thank you, Lord. Love you. Amen. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. So excited to see this little church. Pull that microphone up. Okay. Okay. Let's pray first. Okay. 
Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now, and God, just so grateful and thankful for what you've done in and through my life, God. Thankful and grateful for each and every person sitting here in this church right now. It says in your word, Lord Jesus, that being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun the good work, Lord Jesus, you've begun the good work in me, and you've begun the good work in every person here. So, Lord Jesus, we know you are faithful to bring it to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. So I just pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you'd remove all distractions. Lord Jesus, that I would decrease and you would increase, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you would lead me in, in this testimony. In Christ's name I pray, amen. amen. I just um, want to say, uh-oh, peoples. <laughs> anyway, um, I wanted to tell you guys how grateful and thankful I um, we all know about sin. We all come from sin. Mm. I had a sinful past, and I'm, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time with that. Um, I was a monster in the streets. I did all kinds of crazy stuff. But God, God saved me. And yeah. he did that because I cried out to him. So I'm sorry. I think that, I think that I'm all mixed up. So I cried out to the Lord. In my, in my addiction, I had a 32-year addiction. Um, my father, my father um, prayed for me faithfully. Um, many nights did he toss and turn and go to the streets looking for me, calling the, the morgues to see if I was there. Um, my dad is here tonight because God is faithful. Amen. <laughs> We each have somebody out there praying for us, right? Yeah. Every single one of us. And because of his prayers, because prayer changes things, yeah. right? Yeah. Because of my dad's prayers, my life was saved. And um, yeah. so I cried out to God in my addiction. And my help came in the form of an arrest. I was arrested. I was looking at 12 years, uh, eight months. But God. Um, but God. And um, I ended up getting four years serving time in... Um, as an inmate firefighter, and as my time was winding down, I was I was seeking the Lord. As soon as, as soon as I was arrested, I got a hold of a Bible, because I knew where to run. My dad taught me. He had me in whirly birds when I was little, <laughs> and um, I knew where to turn. I just hadn't. So I cried out to the Lord, and He's faithful to hear my hear my call, and. Uh, as I got my Bible and I started reading it and studying it and I just surrendered everything. That's the number one thing is full surrender, people. That's the number one thing is full surrender. So um, his word says that he sent his word to heal us and to save us from our destruction. Everything that we need right there. He sent his word to heal us and to save us from our destruction. Everything that we need is in the word of God. So that's super powerful to me. But... Going back to my testimony, I'm sitting in fire camp, and I want to tell you how you turn for Christ has affected my life. I was brought here because of a book, the You Turn for Christ book, that circulated through the prison to fire camp to me. And that happened because of Pastor John Schwab and Kathy Schwab and their faithfulness at the prison. <laughs> I would just want to take this opportunity because Pastor John Schwab, you always call me out when, when you're up here. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so I'm calling you out, Pastor. <laughs> I love you, and I thank you for my life. I got a hold of that book, and um, the Lord had just given me a scripture when I was in there, and he, he told me to put nothing wicked before my eyes because I was still reading my James Patterson books, but I was serving the Lord, but I was still, I had, you know, Bible studies at my bunk. He, he opened all kinds of doors for me to serve him. Because um, I told him that I would serve him. When they said 12 years, 8 months, I said, if that's what it's going to take, Lord, I'll serve you 12 years and 8 months in prison. But he was faithful to give me 4 years, and I got out in 3, right? Praise God. So, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Um, I, I wanted to tell you, when I started reading that book, I, it said it was brought to me by the one person that I knew from the streets. And she brought me this book, and it said, you turn for Christ. And I'm like, okay, just because it says Christ doesn't mean it is Christ. So I said, give me the book. And I started reading it. And I started reading about the story of Miss Peggy and Pastor Jerry. And 
And I just knew that very moment I was supposed to come to U-Turn for Christ. That's where I was supposed to go. So I sent a letter to the office and said, I wanted to inquire, what, what do I need to do? Because I related to it. Pastor Jerry went to the fire camps. I'm in fire camp. They were speed addicts. I was a speed addict. Like, I could totally relate, you know? I was like, wow, th this is where I'm supposed to go for sure. And so I sent a letter, and, and they, you know, and I thought I had to have this whole date and everything lined up. And so I was all excited. I had, you know, everybody at fire camp praying for my date when I got released. And um, I got there, and, and I, I was supposed to meet this person, and she was gone. She was on, on vacation. So I was, I was just like, what do you mean? <laughs> but I still got my bed, and I still got to come in, and that was, that was, that was the beginning of the restoration. Mm -hmm. Beginning of the restoration, right? God is faithful. He says he promises in Joel 2.25 that he will restore all. Not some, not part, but all. It says that he will restore what the chewing locust, the swarming locust, and the crawling locust has eaten out of your life. That's all. That's all inclusive. If you go to the word all and you look it up, it means every single thing. It's my favorite word ever, right? <laughs> so if you ask my ladies, they'll say all. So, <laughs> so um, God's word says that he'll restore all that, that the locust has eaten. And what the locust has eaten in my, in my addiction was my family. It robbed me of every single thing, every single thing in my life. It, it, it's not uh, a respecter of persons. Addiction will take everything. Uh, separation from God will take everything. It'll take you darker than you ever wanted to go, and you'll stay longer than you ever needed to stay. But God, God is faithful and just, and he'll call you back. So um, I wanted to share Joel 2.25, 2 that he restored that. I was separated from my son. When he turned 18, he couldn't watch me in my addiction anymore. I wasn't like this great mother um, I was for a few years, but when I was caught up in my addiction, um, I abandoned my son. I'm just going to keep it real. Um, when I would get high, I didn't want my son to see me. So um, if I was high for three weeks, I wasn't home for three weeks. And, you know, that's very devastating on a young man. And my dad was faithful to take care of my son when I wasn't there. And he had him in church. So I'm grateful for that. Um, when my son turned 18, he didn't want to watch me in the streets anymore because I was violent and volatile, and um, I was nothing pretty in the streets, um, nothing that a, a young man wanted to say that that's my mom. But God, God restores. Um, what the enemy meant for evil, God turned around for good. So um, after, after writing to my son faithfully in prison every single week, and praying, I was going to this group called Moms and praying for that, and um, that my son would come and see me, that I would get a letter, anything, and I didn't, and I was just devastated. But when I got out, within hours, my son was calling me, and he, and he, he had right to speak to me, tell me he was angry, and I understood that. But I still continued to pray. As I was serving at the women's ranch, we started a prayer board because I wanted to see the women I wanted the women to see the hand of God move because it was so super powerful for me. In prison, I started a prayer journal. I wrote, I journaled to God. I poured everything out. Um, I had this one incident where I was in a cell with seven other women, and they were turning on me. I, I used to fight in the streets. However, God told me I was going to have to fight, and here I'm locked down in a cell, and this was one of those cells where that's what happened. And I, I was praying out crying out to God because they were turning on me because I was the one sitting on my bunk praying. But God saved me. He gave me a scripture in Deuteronomy that said that he would send my enemies fleeing seven different ways. I'm in a cell. I'm locked down. How am I sending anybody anywhere? But he did. Sure enough, the very next day they pulled me out and they sent they, what they call a shotgun. They shotgunned that room, and they sent those women seven different ways. He put me in a cell with a bunch of other women and a, and a study Bible so that we started ministering. That's how I started getting ready for what the Lord had for me here at U-Turn for Christ. He was preparing me back then, just like he's preparing every single one of you right now. You might think, how can I be used? If he can use a tore back person like I was with a needle in my arm, if he can use that, he can use every single one of you. God's got a calling on your Amen. life. Um, I, I, wanted, I don't want to spend all night up here. I just wanted to tell you, I wanted to 
give you the hope of restoration. God restores. My son was restored to me, and I want to show you some pictures of that. And my father's been restored to me. <sighs> and that's you turn for Christ. I couldn't have that used to be my I couldn't have what I have today without you turn for Christ. It gave me that sound foundation to stand upon. There's me and my son. Amen. <laughs> that's that's because God loves us. There's I love that. Amen. 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 And there's a video. So th at the women's ranch, we have a prayer board. Okay. Right okay. There's my son. Jason, my son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. God's answered prayer. Joel 2, 25. He will restore all that the enemy has taken. My Amen. Son. Oh. Amen. What a blessing, Cindy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come here, babe. We're going to pray over her. We're going to pray over Cindy. She's not going far. We're not going to let her. <laughs> John Schwab will hunt her down, I know. Uh, but, Dad, you got to be proud, don't you? All those prayers that have come to fruition. And I don't know if you got to hear that video, but that picture was a video of her son moving her prayer request from a request to a prayer being answered. That's what that was, the video of. What a blessing. We're going to anoint her with oil and pray over her and celebrate what God has done, is doing, and will continue to do in her life. Father, we come before you and we just thank you so much for the great God you are, Lord. Lord, that you take ashes in our lives and turn them into beauty God and to Lord I just pray for Cindy I pray that you would just anoint her continue to to anoint her God from the top of her head to the <coughs> very tips of her soul God mm -hmm. I pray that you would open heaven and pour out your spirit continue to pour out your spirit on her God mm -hmm. I pray that you would open doors for her to be able to go and share in the prisons Lord and to it, at different homes, whatever you have for her, God, I just pray that you would open heaven and pour out your spirit upon her, God. We're in the last days, and I pray that you would use her, continue to use her mightily, God. Mm -hmm. I pray that you'd give her divine appointments every day, Lord. She shares with everyone she meets, and I pray that as she goes to Walmart or Target or wherever it is that she goes, God, that you would open the gates of heaven and pour out your spirit and divine appointments for her to continue to share her heart with the lost and dying world. Mm. So, Lord, we ask that you just pour out your favor upon her. Yes. As she goes, I pray that you would just lead and guide her. And just every step she takes, Lord, would be um, instructed by you, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I pray that you just give her peace as these new uh, adventures unfold. Give her peace. Help yes, her to Lord. be still and mm -hmm. know that you are God. Please. And that you'll show her exactly where and uh, what she's to do. So pour out your spirit, Lord. We ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Love you. Love you. Oh, so much God wants to do. <clears throat> Amen. Love the picture of uh, one committed to the Lord, one being faithful to his word, and, um, and one that <laughs> five years, I'm sure there were plenty of times that the enemy was saying, just get out of here. What are you doing with this mess? And Cindy continued to stay in the calling that God had on her life, and so what a blessing it is. Would you turn to Isaiah chapter 42? If you've been with us, we've been going through the book of Isaiah in chapter 42. We're uh, blessed to be able again to have a time of being able to celebrate what's going on with Cindy and, and her service to the Lord. We'll see this in a minute a little bit more. Um, 
the blessing of her overseeing all that time, uh, the women, and uh, being such a blessing to the minister of U-Turn for Christ and Calvary Chapel Romaland as she's helped Peggy with so many women's events and the women leaders uh, in, in setting up those as well. Isaiah 42, verse 1. It says, Behold, my servant whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. One verse tonight. Just one verse. To be able to look at some very important words that are in this verse, sometimes when we study through the Bible, it brings forth words that we just need to really pay attention to. And the word here, behold, has such an emphasis on it <clears throat> that we need to really take a, a moment to talk about it. The word behold or beholding to observe. It is, as Isaiah is writing about the future Messiah, remember, 800 years before Christ would come to the earth, here's the prophet speaking about the Messiah that's coming, and he's saying, behold, or look at, observe, watch, pay attention to, consider, witness, if you will, the incredible things that God has to speak about the Messiah and his coming. And today we get to look back and we get to see after the Messiah has come. No greater word that I could even present before you today because nothing is more important than beholding the Messiah. Nothing is more important than us looking into the life of Jesus Christ. And knowing and recognizing that he is Savior of the world. He is all that God professed for him to be as the one that would save us from our sin. Remember when Jesus healed the man with the withered hand. Turn to Matthew in chapter 12 for a moment, if you would. It was on the Sabbath that he did that healing. And the Pharisees, the word of God tells us, began to plot at how it would be that they would kill him. And then we have uh, Matthew quoting this verse from Isaiah, speaking about Jesus. So we know that as we look into the, the verse in Isaiah, that it is a verse speaking specifically about the Lord Jesus Christ and the Messiah coming to the earth. Look at it with me, chapter 12 and verse 14. Then the Pharisees went out and plotted against him how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there, and a great multitude followed him, and he healed them. What did Cindy say? All. Not some. <laughs> Not a part of them. All of them. Every one of them with diseases. Amen? Amen? And then it says, Yet he warned them not to make him known, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and I will declare justice to the Gentiles, so important that we understand Isaiah is speaking of the Messiah. And Matthew makes sure that we are confirmed to know that. And important for you and I to be able to look into, if you will, the Lord Jesus Christ. A rightful study by you and I into Jesus. And knowing that he is certainly the Messiah of the world allows for us to be those that put our trust in him our belief in him and to the point of making sure that he is Lord or master of our lives. It is by us examining him and his life that we allow for him to be able to be that rightful person, that rightful place, our Messiah, our Savior and Lord. 
In John's Gospel in chapter 1, you remember when Jesus <clears throat> was uh, walking towards John the Baptist, he would say this. He said, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The word behold. It's such an important word for us. And so many times we just skip over it. But it's one that's really calling for us to be those that observe who Jesus is. That we really peer into, if you will, his life. Because that's the most important thing that we could possibly do. It is that we're to come and reason with him, Isaiah would say. You and I need to behold the Lord Jesus Christ and then watch as he draws by his Holy Spirit us to fall in love with him as we sing, he loves us so that we might love him. Scripture is clear to tell us he first loved us. And as we peer into his life, as we behold the master, the Messiah, you can't but help. If you're serious and you come with a mind that is open to see, there is no way that you can't but fall in love with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen? Amen. And that's really what the gospel message is all about. Recognizing the love of the Father. And understanding sinful man cannot have a relationship with holy God except by the blood of Jesus. It's a constant, if you will, look back to the cross of Christ and understanding the incredible love that was poured out for your and my sin to be forgiven. Go back to chapter 42 and verse 1. He says, Behold, my servant. It's amazing, isn't it? God the Father speaking about Jesus Christ and calling him this, just my servant. Here's the master, and he is looking to the Father, and he is saying, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. A servant. In John's gospel, he calls for us to be able to recognize that he is God himself, and yet submitted himself to God the Father and the will of the Father to be able to allow for sinful man to have a path to a holy God. For sinful man, for sinful woman, to be able to have the opportunity to spend eternity with the holy God. Uh, turn to Philippians, if you would, in chapter 2 for a moment. Let me just help you to think with me about this amazing word that is spoken here. Behold, or look into, or understand, grab, if you will, the significance of my servant being mentioned here. And notice that the servant in your Bible is a capital S, isn't it? It is because he is speaking about the one and only holy anointed servant, the Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 2 of Philippians, in chapter 2 and verse 5, it says this, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. So the Apostle Paul says, hey, look, church, if you're really going to call yourself a Christian, then you have to have the same mindset that Christ had. You have to be like-minded with Christ to truly be a little Christ, a Christian. And so he says, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of man, and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Constantly, the scripture pointing to the Messiah and pointing to the cross to be able to show us where Jesus was, as God called him here in Isaiah, my servant. The one that did exactly as I asked of him. He came to set the example for us to follow. And you and I are to be like-minded with him and being those that are humble 
and those that are ready to be able to serve and to serve, notice with me, to the point of death, to continue to serve until the time in which the Lord would allow for us to be called up into heaven in the rapture or to breathe, <coughs> breathe our last breath here on the earth and then to be with him for all of eternity. John said it this way in chapter 6 and verse 38, recording Jesus, he said, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And so we celebrate Jesus in Cindy tonight. As we think about the great things that the Lord has done, what a glorious thing it is to think about how God has used Cindy in such a powerful way. But it's Jesus in Cindy that we are celebrating, and she'll be the first one to shout out amen to that. And what a blessing it is to see as she has followed him. And so we have to ask ourselves tonight, don't we? Even as Cindy's up here, I'm thinking, my goodness, Lord, forgive me for the times that I haven't been what Cindy has been. We have to ask ourselves, have I been that kind of servant? Are my eyes on the Lord Jesus and am I one that is... Listen, I have never had or asked Peggy to be able to speak to Cindy about doing anything that she said, no, I can't do that. Everything that she's ever asked of Cindy, Cindy has said, oh, I can do... Yeah, we can do that. Sometimes it was... Incredible feats that were going to be done. <laughs> and I, I, didn't, I was glad she was asking Cindy and not me. <laughs> what a blessing to be able to see the Lord use her in such a powerful way. And, and we have to ask ourselves, don't we? Are, are we putting ourselves in that place of following Jesus and being a servant? God's servant. To be able to do His will. When it's not so easy, when it's difficult to serve. For the Lord said this in Mark chapter 10, my, one of my favorite verses and the theme verse of the gospel of Mark comes in verse 10. In chapter 10 and verse 45, he says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Incredible to watch and see Cindy work in that manner, just <laughs> long nights, right? I, I've been on the other end of those phone calls, um, early mornings. Uh, but the Lord said, I need you. For such a time as this, I need you. And I remember when Cindy came and Peg was so thankful to be able to have her there and <clears throat> really to allow Cindy to be able to kind of run the, the woman's ranch for a season without any help, without us even being there to help, except for catastrophes that needed to be dealt with. And then Peggy began to be able to help disciple her again and to be able to work with her in how the ministry is run there at the woman's ranch. And the whole time... Cindy was just serving, just serving. That all she wanted to do was just serve the Lord. And again, the Word of God is telling us, and this is a word for all of us, to death, to the point of the cross. Jesus Christ just didn't serve for a while. He served his whole life here on earth to the point of death. And the call for you and I is, is to follow him, to be those that are ready to serve in such a capacity. Listen, sometimes it's no fun. Sometimes it's not the, the pat on the back. Nobody's going to acknowledge the serving. But the service needs to be unto the Lord. It needs not to be for a pat on the back or acknowledgement for man, because if that's what you're after, then it's a, a serving in the flesh, not in the spirit. The serving in the 
spirit is one that serves. And when you're treated like a servant, you go on serving because you know that's God's call on your life. And that's what we've gotten to see with Cindy and been so blessed by it. Jesus' example was for us to be able to follow. Serving when it was no fun. When he was withdrawn, Luke tells us in chapter 22, from the rest of the disciples about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and he prayed, Hey, Dad, this isn't any fun. I don't know if I want to serve any longer. In fact, I think I'll just quit serving at this point. They can figure it out for themselves. No, he said, Father, I don't want to do this, but if it's your will, then let it be so. If it's your cup, this, your will, Lord, take this cup, he said, but if not, let your will be done. And so we have to recognize that the serving needs to be in that manner. It means that you and I need to really check our motives in even serving, don't we? We need to check our motives to make sure that the service that we're giving is unto the Lord. I can't remember a time in the five years, I can't remember a time where Cindy was serving. I saw her serving all over the place, but I never saw Cindy looking around to see if anybody was watching her serve because she was serving the Lord. You and I need to be those that are serving the Lord, not looking for a pat on the back. Go back to chapter 42 and verse 1 with me. We look at another couple words. He says, my servant whom I uphold. And so notice quickly with me that God is saying him and him alone is the one that upholds. It's a manner of saying I affirm him or I support. I'm supportive of him. Everything that he's going to do, everything that he's going to say, every time he's going to speak, I am giving acknowledgement of that is right. He's saying, I uphold him. And once again, we have to ask ourselves, can God the Father say that about us? Can he say, Jerry Brown, I stand behind you in the words that you're speaking. I stand behind you in the action that you're taking. I stand behind you. I'm uplifting, acknowledging that the actions that you're taking are right. We have to ask ourselves, as we look at these words. Again, we go back. He says, my elect one. <laughs> There's only one that is elected by God. And we get to this part of the verse. It's obvious that it is all about Jesus Christ. He is the one, the only one that is elected by God to be Savior of the world. And the Lord is making that very clear here as he's speaking through Isaiah. There's only one Messiah. And he's been elected by me. Turn to 1 Peter with me for a moment, would you? In chapter 1 of 1 Peter, uh, or chapter 2 of 1 Peter, it is <clears throat> that we have this verse in verses uh, 4 uh, and 5. It says this, Coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God, precious, you also, living stones, are being built up in a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. But look what he says, that he is chosen by God. He is elected by God. Well, when we look at Isaiah, that's what the Word of God is saying. The Lord himself speaking through the prophet. There's only one. And so the Lord Jesus speaks it out to us as he says to us, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and there is no other way. There is only one way to have entrance into the kingdom of God, the elect one, the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand why the word of God is calling us to peer into, to behold the Lord Jesus Christ, because it is in him and only in him that we have salvation. It needs to be very clear. 
It needs to be very solid. It needs to be one word. Many people say, that's very narrow-minded, Pastor. You're absolutely right. Narrow is the way. Broad is the road of destruction. Very narrow-minded because it's very narrow, biblically-minded. Jesus Christ and him alone brings salvation. Back to the verse, if you will, verse 1, and it says this, In whom my soul delights. And once again, 800 years before Christ comes to the earth, the prophecy is spoken about Jesus. But let me remind you of a time when Jesus, once again, was being baptized by John in the Jordan. Turn there, if you would, and look at it with me. Matthew chapter 3. And look at the words that are spoken here that are fulfillment of this scripture once again, some 800 years before Christ would come. The word says this in chapter 3 of Matthew. And when he had been baptized, he came up immediately from the water, and behold, there it is again, behold, I want to make sure you look into, peer, observe, witness. The Lord is calling us. The heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and a lightning upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. My soul delights in him, Isaiah said. And as we see him baptized in the Jordan, we see the Lord coming and saying, speaking from the heavens, and saying that I I often tell those that are being baptized, listen for the Lord to speak this. Because he wants you to know that when you're baptized, when you're making that declaration publicly of what's taking place inside and your commitment to the Lord, he wants you to hear him say, this is my son. Or, this is my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. But this passage of Scripture is speaking about the one and only elect of God, Savior of the world. And God the Father speaks from heaven, and he says, I'm delighted in him. In him I draw great pleasure. I am well pleased. And so we have to ask ourselves again this evening, can God look down from heaven and say that about your day to day? (laughs) Oh, wait a minute, Pastor. That's getting a little personal, right? You're talking about today? I didn't have such a good day. (laughs) Okay, then I need to ask forgiveness. Get on my face before the Lord and repent and ask forgiveness. And then get back up because a righteous man or woman falls. But seven times, he's getting back up. She's getting back up. Recognizing that the Lord Jesus came for that reason. That he knew that we're sinners in need of a Savior. But that you and I need to put our eyes right back on him and recognize that he continues to save. He didn't just save me one time when I came to know Jesus and say, Lord, come into my life and be my master. No, every day and moment by moment sometimes he saves me as he allows for me to be empowered to make good choices, right choices, righteous choices, rather than choices that would satisfy the flesh. And so it is with you. And we need to recognize as we look at this word that the Lord is saying, man, here's whom I am well pleased. Can we as we are called to follow Jesus, hear the Father say tonight, in Him I'm well pleased. If not, if not, the moment that I ask God to forgive me, then He can. Then He can speak out those words. In Jerry Brown, because you've recognized your sin and asked me to forgive you of your sin and cried out because you hate the sin, now I can say I'm well pleased in you. Amen? Amen. We need to be able to do that. Well, then he says this, I've put my spirit upon him. Once again, looking at that passage in Matthew, it says this in chapter uh, 3, verse 16 and 17, when he was baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, 
the heaven was open and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, a lightning upon him. And so I want to tell you one of the greatest things uh, about leading this ministry is being able to see this very thing happen over and over again. What a blessing it is, huh, Cindy? What a blessing it is to be able to see women that are tore up from the floor up. That's what Ra will say, right? <laughs> Men, right, that are destroyed. And, 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 and Johnny doesn't even want to look at them. But God does. And to be able to see them broken and come before the Lord and asking God to forgive them for their sin and watching as the Holy Spirit comes upon them and the radical change in their life. Talk about Johnny. What a radical change. When God the Holy Spirit came into Johnny's life and and no longer the man that he once was. Thank God I didn't know him when he didn't know the Lord. But what a blessing to know him as a dear brother now in the Lord. Peggy told me the other day, you know, she was talking to Johnny and she said, Pastor, she said, Jerry, he's just such a sweet guy. I said, man, thank God we didn't know him before he knew the Lord. (laughs) What a blessing it is to see the Holy Spirit come into a man's life, into a woman's life, and radically change them as he's radically changed me, radically changed my wife. It is in seeing the Holy Spirit poured out in people's life that we get to see that incredible difference that, that only he can make. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13 says this, In him you also trusted. After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption and the purchase possession to the praise of his glory. I just want to leave you with a couple of thoughts. Turn to Isaiah chapter 1 and leave you with a couple of thoughts from this word. If you behold the Lord Jesus Christ, all the rest of the things that we've talked about will fall into the right place. Chapter 1, verse 18. Chapter 1, verse 18, book of Isaiah. Come now, let us reason together. You might as well say, let us behold the Lord. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Cindy Cindy came to the place that she beheld the Lord Jesus Christ. And she's been discipled in his word. She's been able to grasp the abundant life and what it is really about. Church, it's about pouring into other ladies day and night for five years. It's about standing at the abortion clinic and having nine babies saved during the time that you're here. It's about helping at every woman's event that was ever done by Calvary Chapel, Roma Land, or U-Turn for Christ in those five years. It's about finding ways to help Peggy without even being asked. It's about staying up past her bedtime and getting up before everyone else so that she could have quiet time with the Lord. It's about being a mouthpiece the hands and the feet of Jesus. And that's how we get to celebrate Cindy tonight and her being a servant of the Lord Most High. Let's pray. 
Father, we come before you and thank you. What a great night to celebrate. What a great time, God, to know that it's all about you in Cindy that we're celebrating. She'd be the first to say, but God, as she said all night. Lord, we come before you again and ask that you would continue to bless her. Allow for her to be able to have sweet fellowship with us year in and year out. Allow for her to be able to, uh, Lord, to have the discernment now to be able to know when you open doors and, God, when you shut them. That you would step through the doors that you open, God, that she'd not try and push her way through the ones you shut. Bless her life. Lord, thank you for her dad being here. I thank you for his prayers and his teaching. Lord, your word says train up a child when they are young. When they grow old, they will not depart from it. Thank you for being a God that keeps your word. Bless him, Lord, for those prayers. God, we pray that you would continue to allow for us just to be able to have sweet fellowship with one another as we... Behold, the Lord Jesus Christ, Messiah, King of kings, Lord of lords, Savior of the world. It's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Would you all stand with us, huh?